Hi guys and welcome back to Wildebeard Reviews. Today we are talking about DC TV again. Yeah, that's right. All the DC CW TV shows have come back from their winter breaks and they hit the ground running with the first one we're talking about today, Supergirl. Uh, this episode's titled Legion of Superheroes and that title doesn't disappoint. In this episode we get Supergirl in a coma. We get some good stuff with Rain and we get the Legion of Superheroes, three of them at least. And what I would say is probably one of the better episodes of Supergirl this season. Um, admittedly, Supergirl is my least favorite of the now five DC TV shows on the CW, which includes Black Lightning, which we'll talk about in a little bit on another video here on the channel. But Supergirl. Now, up to this point this season, I haven't been really high on this, on Supergirl. The the villain has seemed weak, it just, it has been uninteresting, and they gained some ground with me, um, with the winter finale, with Rain showing her full power, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Supergirl, and beating her fairly handily. And so that's where this episode picks up. Supergirl is wounded, she's actually in a coma, resting in sort of a rehabilitation tank on the ship of the Legionnaires. And Brainiac 5, a new character to the show, is talking with her through some sort of telepathy, telekinesis, or tele telepathy, tel something, right? Hand wavy explanations. <laughs> anyway, and as he tries to help bring her out of her coma, Rain is uh, wreaking havoc on the city. She is making everyone pay for their sins, and no one can stop her. And the Legionnaires are afraid to stop her because the reason, whole reason they were time traveling to begin with is they were trying to solve some big thing and some kind of plague that was spreading throughout the galaxy and they put the cure for it in their DNA. So if any of them die, they can't get back to the future and solve that problem. So they're very hesitant to get involved in the present and also timeline considerations, things like that. So it eventually gets to the point where Rain is, um, sorry, spoilers. We're talking about spoilers if we hadn't gotten there yet. Um, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, eventually it's the point where Rain is attacking um, a prison there in National City and is just going to slaughter everyone. So the Legionnaires finally buck up and they say, okay, we got to go do something. We get this cool scene of Brainiac 5 and Saturn Girl and mon -El suiting up in their Legionnaire suits and putting their, their Legion rings on and going out and fighting, uh, fighting Rain. And they're kind of holding their own for a little bit and then they start kind of the tides of the battle starts turning and then Martian Manhunter shows up and helps save the day and then Supergirl wakes up and eventually jams some kryptonite into um, into rain and off she goes defeated and so um, there was a lot of build up to that and it was a good it was a good climax I think overall this was a pretty good episode I liked the Legion um, especially Brainiac 5 um, I know a lot of people online were kind of griping about his makeup and the, the effects on him I didn't care I loved the character I mean it looks a little a little TV low budget it could be done a little better but as far as his character and the actor playing him <coughs> excuse me I really enjoyed it and I'm glad that character is a part of the show and I hope he sticks around for a while. Um, and as far as the other two Legionnaires, they were pretty good too. I've never been a big fan of mon -El, um, but Saturn Girl's alright. Um, I will say though that the final fight scene was a little clunky. The uh, Brainiac 5 stays in the ship and is firing down at rain. Um, and so he's just kind of hovering there and then the other two legionnaires have this great moment where they activate their flight rings and, and float up like they're going to fight and then they just kind of hover there and then they come back down. So I was kind of like, that's awkward. And um, so aside from some lackluster fight choreography in this one, which I can understand given some budget constraints, given how many people they had in this episode, the CG for the ship and its weapons and things like that, I'll give it a little bit of a pass, but it, it also kind of highlights some of my problems with superhero or superman and supergirl and they're kind of related characters any of the kryptonians they are so overpowered characters that it's hard to believe them when on a tv budget sometimes when you know that those characters are capable of so much more but they're held back by the constraints of a tv budget you know if they can move as as at the speed of light they can you know knock down a mountain with a single punch and they're just kind of duking it out in a prison yard it always kind of falls flat to me but I can forgive that sometimes, especially for an episode like this that was pretty good. Now, 
some of the story stuff we get in this episode is actually fairly interesting. So once Rain is defeated, she goes back to her version of the Fortress of Solitude that's in the desert versus the Arctic and goes to um, the dark Kryptonian. We don't, I don't think we have a name for the person that she talks to. Um, that's the hologram from uh, old Krypton. She says, you're not the only one that's here. And I'm like, oh, okay. So they sent along some minions to help Rain um, along with this, which is really good. That gives it the story a little bit uh, more to do as we race to, as we go towards the end of the season. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff between now and, and the end of the season. I think this uh, was episode 9 or 10, and there's usually 22 episodes, so there's plenty of time left before we get to the season finale. So, also in this episode, we get a little bit of humor where we have Lena Luthor or Lena Luthor and uh, James Olsen. They had a kiss in the previous episode, and they're acting weird about it. And Lena wants to go talk to Kara about it because she's friends with Kara, and Kara and James used to date. They used to have a thing, so she's kind of weird, and she wants to clear the air. But of course, Supergirl's in a coma, so Martian Manhunter has to sit in for her. And it's super awkward, and Melissa Benoist does a fantastic job of pretending to be um, Martian Manhunter, pretending to be Kara. So it was it was really good, and it was a funny moment, good moment of levity, and an otherwise fairly dramatic episode. So that was good, even if it was a little CW for, for my personal taste. I still liked the execution of it, even if I didn't like that particular plot point. So overall... Pretty decent episode, um, especially coming off the winter break. You need to come back in strong, um, especially after the winter finale they had that was really strong. So a couple good episodes here to, to bookend the winter finale. I liked it. I enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to what they go to in next week. How about you? Did you like this episode of Supergirl? Where does Supergirl rank amongst your C all the CW shows? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, continue the conversation with me at Will Reviews on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time, see you at the cinema.